What's poppin' y'all? Today we're gonna get into a very fun topic, which is why we should steal music again. This is off the back of a poll that I did on a community post, which a lot of you voted in actually. Surprisingly, more people commented on it than I thought. And I gave you guys three topics. I was like, what do you think the next one's about? Will I do all of these? Probably, but the one that was voted on most was the music discovery one, the algorithms, why they suck which I might get into on the next episode or the one after that. This is something that I don't have a set schedule for. I don't really like following a particular schedule. I do aim to get it at least maybe twice a month, perhaps even once a week. I can record these once a week. I just don't want it to become like rinsed and just do one every day. So I want to have it be something that we can look forward to coming together and having an interesting discussion, including in the comments. I love reading the comments on these things. I largely read the comments on almost every video on the main channel and this channel to a degree there are certain posts where i may not check it out but in topics that are relatively interesting and i ask you guys specific questions i'm usually reading through the comments and i like to see the discussions that you guys have amongst yourselves but this one's about stealing music and someone was saying hey am i talking about leaks no i have previously said that i don't really support leaks I don't condone leaks and I don't participate in leaks. Part of the reason is that, sure, I can bring up that, oh yeah, it's stealing, the artist didn't want this music out, etc. But that's part of the reason. Although the majority of the reason is number one, a lot of it is unfinished music. And this is something that happens frequently with people that get leaks. When the song actually releases, they're like, yo, why doesn't this sound like the leak? Well, the finished version was never meant to sound like that, but you got so accustomed to the leak that now you think it's supposed to sound like that for the finished version. And when it comes out and it sounds different, you're disappointed. So I never want to set that expectation. Leaked music also, you might get, I wouldn't say addicted, you might get accustomed to a certain sound from the artist and then that artist had left that sound in the past. Now for a dead artist, I think listening to their leaks is a different story. But yeah, for the most part, when it comes to leaks, that's the reason why. I don't want to go hunting for leaks, number one. Number two, there isn't really an artist that I care for leaks for, unless it's like super old, like let's say 2005, 2006. Then I might be like, oh shoot, this is new. I might check this out, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about music that's officially released. We don't pay for it and we just snatch it and we take it. And this was something that's actually very, very common. Some younger folks might not remember this, but I would say somewhere between 20, uh, definitely 2012, 2012 to 2014, 15, I would say is probably the golden age of this, maybe even a bit earlier, but it was when everybody had, and maybe even 2010, an organized iTunes library, shout out VK, if you know, you know, where you would download the album when it came out and that because at the time they were still releasing cds there was this transitionary period when people didn't really use cds so at that time i didn't really like to buy it on itunes because it was kind of messing up your library so what, I, so what a lot of people would do is they would if they wanted to support the artist they would buy tickets and they would pay for the music but they would also just download it and they would download it illicitly and they would store their itunes library and it was kind of this fun thing people would even download mixtapes on there because you couldn't officially buy mixtapes so you had to download the mixtape, give it your own. You could cust it was so customizable. It's kind of like reminds me of MySpace days versus now Facebook, where MySpace, you could customize the HTML, redesign it, have your own look. It was the same thing with your iTunes library. So you could give it certain covers. You can have the tracks in different orders. A like playlist, people had their own personal playlists, which were like albums maybe of leaked songs or songs that were on different tapes and they put them in the order that they liked. And this happened for a long time. But then everyone got accustomed to streaming because the value proposition was just so good. It's like, hey, $5, $10, I think it was half price for students or yeah, Apple Music was half price for students for a long time. So people just took that, they're like five, $5, no brainer. And everyone, not everyone, the majority of people had an iPhone. So when Apple Music came out and they gave three free months in 2015, a lot of people hopped on board that train and just never stopped. And it was so convenient. They could look up a bunch of music. They could listen to it on demand so they didn't have to have a bunch of storage in their phone and go through the hassle of downloading this music and then putting it on their device, all that other stuff. It saved a lot of time. But when where time is saved and convenience, you lose something. There is no, it's not really, I would say fair exchange, but you're getting screwed on something. And in this case, we're getting screwed on the actual music because a large part of this video is inspired or this talk is inspired by Lewis Rossman. Shout out to that guy. Great, great YouTuber, business guy. I've been watching him for at least five years now. 
really enjoy hearing him talk about stuff, but his video, he was talking about how him paying for YouTube premium or him paying for, let's say Netflix, he gets screwed more than if he just stole it. Like for instance, I think it was, uh, I haven't seen this video in a long time. So I don't really remember. It's not fresh at the top of my mind, but he had paid for Netflix or some streaming service and they were throttling the quality that he was streaming the movie at. So it was like at 1080p and I think he wanted to watch it in 4k and he was saying if I steal it so I did the right thing I paid for it these guys have the legitimate license to stream it to me and I'm getting it at a lower quality than if I just stole it so why the hell wouldn't I just steal it I'm getting screwed over and this is what we get with music and the reason why I say that is number one there have been a lot of subsequent changes made to albums that weren't meant to be made and that couldn't have been made in the past. So I'm gonna go through a couple of those and then we're gonna dive into a bit of detail. So the most recent that I can remember is in June of 2022. Lizzo had this song that she released called Girls. And the, <laughs> man, okay. So the song's original lyrics said, hold my bag, itch, hold my bag. Do you see this ish? I'm a spaz. And then she changed it to, to do you see this, hold me back. And then, she posted on her social media and said, it's been brought to my attention that there's a harmful world, harmful word in my new song, Girls. Let me make one thing clear. I never want to promote derogatory language. As a fat black woman in America, I've had many hurtful words used against me. So I overstand. Oh my God. I overstand the power words can have, whether intentionally or in my case, unintentionally. I'm proud to say there's a new version of Girls with a lyric change. This is the result of me listening and taking action. As an influential artist, I'm dedicated to being part of the change I've been wanting to see in the world. XOXO. So the original song, it wasn't meant to have this. Obviously, it hits different now. Have I even listened to this song? No, but I know that it hits different now because this isn't what was supposed to be released. So what would usually happen is, hey, the records were shipped out. We've got a physical product. We bought the single. We have the single in our hands. If she changes the lyrics after that, we've already got the original version. But now, if you're buying, if you're subscribing on streaming platforms, they just change it. So now you go listen to girls and you're like, yo, this isn't the girls that I listened to the first time. And they're like, yeah, it's not because we changed it. And there's really nothing you can do about it. And this is the problem. So another time that this happened was in Beyonce. So this was when, I think this happened in 2022 as well. So Renaissance, the album dropped. And then they said, oh yeah, you know, it has this word spaz, which is the same issue that Lizzo ran into, which, yo, really? It's this bad that people are getting mad at this? This is the word that people are getting mad at. <sighs> so in the song, it says the song contains the word spaz. Beyonce sings spazzing on that spaz on that and she ended up changing it. So the backlash to Heated uh, happened just weeks after Lizzo. Isn't it ironic that they're just like looking for this word, hunting for it? And then, you know, people are complaining about it. So this changed. They gave a statement that the lyric would be removed from the song. They said it wasn't meant to be harmful. But now you just had these words that were originally meant to be on the song. The artist wanted them on the song. They released it. But now you can't listen to it like that anymore if you're to use streaming services. How would you ever listen to the original song? You would have to pirate it or steal it. Now, the one that actually affected me for a song that I had actually listened to and been listening to from an album that I really enjoyed that I released over 10 years ago was YG. So when everyone pretended to care about Asians for a solid three to four months before tossing them to the side like a used toy in Toy Story, there was the whole stop Asian hate thing, right? And the target of this became YG's My Crazy Life album in the song Meet the Flockers. So in the original song, it said, first you find a house and spoke it, scope it out. Find a Chinese neighborhood because they don't believe in bank accounts. And he actually got a ton of hate. And I said this was hip -hop, hypocritical, either on this channel or the previous channel that he actually changed it because he had been attacked by, I don't know if it was Chinese people in America, but Chinese people in general were flooding those comments. And it had blown up previously, but he never changed it. Until now, until the whole stop Asian hate thing happened, then he decided to hop in and change it or his record label decided to change it. So now it's find a find a neighborhood, which completely ruins the context of the song because the authenticity and the reality of that song is what makes it so authentic. Now you're like, oh, find a find a neighborhood. What neighborhood? You're not just going to go into any neighborhood. This one made the most sense. They don't believe in bank accounts. Like, it just hits different now. And congratulations. You can't enjoy the song anymore. Sure, you can enjoy it, but it's not the original version that you were meant to listen to. And that's because they just deemed it so. Now, what's funny is <laughs> people just managed to not catch the song by the Migos, where it was 
Was it slippery? Hmm. It was on Culture One. Where was it? I think it was Get Right With You. Yeah, yeah, Get Right With You. And they're like, going to Chai Land with them. And then I don't know if that word actually gets me demonetized, but let's just say, you know, you ever heard the phrase blank in the armor? So <laughs> it's so funny because like Chai Land isn't even a real place, but people didn't find that song and it didn't pop up during that time. So they didn't decide to cancel it. And I didn't want to point attention to it at that time either because I like the original and I don't want them, I don't want Migos getting heat for it. So now we can't see the, we can't hear the YG one. We can't hear the Beyonce one. Same thing with Lizzo. Also, what recently happened with Vultures, Ye puts out Vultures. The distributor decides like, hey, uh, we don't know how Vultures even got released here, which really someone just phoned it in and said, hey, I can't believe we're doing business with you. I can't believe you put out Ye's Vultures. Like, how could you do that? And the person's like, oh, shoot, I don't know how that happened. So they pull Vultures. So you were paying for your subscription. You're trying to listen to Vultures, and now it's gone off of Apple Music. And it gets back there eventually, but not only does this hurt Ye's sales, but it hurts you as a consumer. You know what would have never happened? If you downloaded Vultures illegally and were listening to it. None of this would affect you. And this even goes back to 2016 when The Life of Pablo released. And it was constantly updated as an album, which I thought was a really cool... Some people say it was like revolutionary. Well, nobody really did it afterwards. And I just think Ye... Like he works very last minute from what we've seen for a lot of stuff. And he was just wanting to keep changing it. But certain songs were changed and people liked the original version of the song that came out. The only way they were able to keep that was if they downloaded it illegally or if they bought it. But back then, this is why things were slightly better. If you got the CD of Meet the Flockers or the original version downloaded, you can hear the original song. You're not going to hear the original song on any of these streaming platforms. So they're kind of depriving us of what we think we're getting. So yeah, you're getting access to all of this music, but you don't own any of this music and they can change it at any given moment. And this is where, are we willing to give up our freedom to listen to songs, how they're meant to be listened to and accept like, hey, this album that I'm getting, it's subject to change. They could take off a couple of tracks. They could change a bunch of tracks later on. And there's nothing you can do about it. Are you willing to accept that? Or are you going to start pretty much stealing music again? And you don't have to do that for all music, but it could just be music that you enjoy. And the crazy thing is like people would always, like, there was also like a group of people that would specifically only download the FLAC files. They're like, nah, man, the FLAC version didn't drop from like the Pirators. And I was always like, damn, these people are really, really into their sound. So I think we might have to go back to this time in history and just stock up. So it's kind of like, hey, an album releases. Yeah, you could listen to it on Apple Music and Spotify, but maybe you should also get a version of it that's downloaded to a hard drive that you save. So it's kind of like a relic now. Because the reason why this was pretty much impossible back then is CDs had to be pressed. So you press CDs, you ship the CDs and records. They're already in the stores. Like, What are you going to do? Recall them? A lot of this is also like money based too. So if this spaz thing happened, and this is where technology frustrates me, man. If this whole spaz thing happened for Beyonce as well as for Lizzo on Girls, if it was back then when we didn't have this digital streaming and all of that, even if it was iTunes era, I think they would have just waited for, for the storm to pass. Maybe they would have changed it when they were performing, which rappers already do now, but they wouldn't take it down. Like imagine back to back, right? Drake said he retired performing that, which sad, fire song. But imagine Drake just decided to pull that song down too. Now you're like, yo, I was enjoying back to back all these years. I can't even listen to it on streaming anymore. And that's the default where most people are listening to their music now or young people, right? So now you got to figure out how to download the song. You got to figure out if the song's high quality, that YouTube to MP3 stuff does not cut it. Like you got to be downloading the actual version of the song. Like, please do not ruin the quality like that. You're running into all these issues. But circling back to the point before, they're not going to recall tens or hundreds of thousands of copies of CDs, pay that amount to recall them, press them again, and then re-release them to change a word or two. That that was just not going to happen. And it wouldn't happen if CDs were still a thing. Now, CDs are inconvenient. Where do you even, who even has a CD player now? Some people might if they still have like a car, an older car, but most people don't. And this is where I'm personally, I can't confirm or deny that I will be going back to having an alternative version of music that I store on a hard drive that I have as a relic because I've seen this happen too many times now and I think it's only going to continue happening. Now there is like the whole wave of canceling, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say it's over now or it ended, but it's largely subsided. It's gotten a lot weaker. I don't know if there was a specific turning point, but I think people slowly just got fed up. 
And perhaps they heard so much nonsense that they're like, man, I'm fed up. I'm just, I'm not trying to hear that. Like they reached the point where they're like, okay, you're complaining about this now, but we'll never get back YGs meet the flockers. Unless, you know, you go hunting for a copy, which they're still out there on certain sites. Will I tell you those sites? I, I, I can't. I would, I want to, but I think somebody in the comments will help you out if you're looking for that. I'd probably only do this for albums that I'd be heartbroken if they changed. But we also don't know what songs will change in the near future. And it's, is it convenient if you're committed to listening to Vultures on Apple Music, let's say, and you're excited about it and it gets taken down and now you can't listen to it? Well, you might as well download it and then you could have been listening to it the entire time. That's the way I look at things. And it seems like as time goes, we're all sort of getting screwed from the streaming thing. The artists, they're really not getting paid partially because the record labels, but we're having music changed repeatedly, taken down, put back up. A lot of artists are getting screwed just from people like faking their music. Like there are so many ind independent artists go through this more where someone just claims their songs or distributes their songs under a different name and says it's their music and they're getting streams from it. And now they have to fight that whole nonsensical situation. This doesn't happen as much to artists with like a huge distributor like a UMG or something like that. But it does happen to smaller scale artists who need this protection more than anyone else. And is it really stealing if the artist isn't making money from the music anyway? And you support them in another way, whether it's buying merchandise, buying a ticket to their show, things like that. So that's something I'd like to see you guys discuss. Do you think that this is going to keep happening? Are we getting screwed by streaming services? I mean, it is ridiculously convenient, but for instance, Tory Lanez, right? For the longest time, I don't know if it's still like that. For Tory Lanez's song, I think it's Enchanted Waterfall. I couldn't even listen to the first track because I think you could listen to it on Spotify. I don't know what was the problem, but there, I can't even listen to a song there. And you're using Apple Music, but you're like, oh, when am I going to get this song? And you don't get the song. And I think at one point they even changed the version of Hurt Me. I think it, the one that had Tori and Trippy on it. One of those versions changed. So we ran, I ran into that issue on Apple Music. Now I have both Apple Music and Spotify. I mean, I need them for work, right? So that wasn't as annoying, but I do prefer the layout of Apple Music on the phone better than Spotify. So it's an inconvenience that I have to go somewhere else. But, and then also, if we get into the whole them kind of like blackballing certain people, like for instance, Tory Lanez, when they had just removed him from playlists and they were doing him greasy. It's like these streaming platforms are so powerful now that we don't even really have ownership of anything. We're not licensing the music. We're pretty much in this weird gray area where we're paying to get access to something that's subject to change at any given moment, which I don't like. But let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Peace.